brand new SVX-130T telescope from Stellarview. I received it day before yesterday and right now I'm in the process of modifying it to fit my mount. You can see I've already put on D rails, top and bottom Lasmandy D rails, as well as a finder scope bracket. So what I'm going to be doing today is modifying the focuser. It is a three and a half inch uh, feather touch focuser, really nice focuser, but what I'd like to do is make sure that it's motorized. So today we'll be putting on the motor assembly, which is brand new for me. My C11 telescope uses a ZWO focus motor, which has been really great. I wanted to get a second focus motor just for this telescope so I don't have to swap them back and forth. And the folks at Stellarview recommend this unit from Optech. So I purchased a kit. It's the Focus Links Quick Sync FTX 40. And it's different than many of the Optech focus motors in that they have a motor which hooks up to the focus knob of the focuser but has to be connected then subsequently to a separate driver box which is powered separately. Here the driver is actually part of the focus motor itself and it can be engaged or disengaged just by rotating it which is a clutch assembly. So you can hand focus and all you need to do is give a little twist and now your focus motor is engaged. This is a lot better than my ZWO focuser which can only be decoupled with a screwdriver and allen wrench from my focus knob. So beside the focuser the kit comes with a 12 volt power supply and cord as well as both short and long USB connections for the focuser to connect it up to my computer and a pair of allen wrenches to do the mounting. So let's see what it takes to put this together. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate the coarse focus knob so I can get at the set screw and with the smaller of the two Allen wrenches we'll just loosen up that set screw. And now I'll do the same thing with the fine focus knob. Loosen the set screw and now the fine focus knob should just pull off and with a little bit of effort it comes off as well exposing this gold hub and a central shaft. So now we can take our focus motor and orient it so that the shaft goes into the hole on the gold focus wheel. And this takes a little bit of effort. But the wheel is in place. And what I'm going to do is orient it so that this black part is facing down toward the ground so that during the night I can actually access the filter wheel with my fingers to manually focus. So once I've got that in place I rotate the wheel to find the set screw for the manual focus knob and I will just tighten that up. So it is now tight and I can see that I'm actually moving you can see as I rotate this that I'm actually changing the position of my focuser and it's not banging into anything which is great. Next step is to go to this set screw which is around the collar of the focuser and just tighten that up. And that should be it. So I'm going to go to the other side where I have just a coarse focus knob and rotate this and make sure that the gold focus knob is true and isn't banging against any parts of the motorized focuser. I can rotate this and now you can see it's locked and the motor is controlling the focus position. Turning it counterclockwise and I'm back into a manual focusing mode. So that is it. It doesn't get much easier than that. So next I'll download the driver onto my laptop and make sure that the computer is communicating with the focus motor and then we can set this up on APT. So now we're ready to give the focuser a test. Two table cables need to be connected. The first is the 12 volt power supply and then the second is the USB connection. And when you make the USB connection 
you'll see a small red enunciator light will come on showing that there's power to the unit. We make sure that the focuser, focus motor is rotated fully clockwise, which is gauges the gears. And you can tell because if you try to wiggle the fine focus knob here by hand, you'll see it doesn't move. So, the next step is going to be to download the software. And the two pieces of software we're going to need are, first of all, the ASCOM driver, which I already have on the computer. And the second is Focus Link's Commander, which is obtained from the Optech uh, website on their downloads page. So when you open up Focus Links the first time, you'll go to the Focuser pull down. And since we're setting up Focuser 1, we'll just say set up. And if we're if you're connected through a serial port, as I am through my USB port, it'll automatically assign it to the next available COM setting. So I'm set up as COM6. Uh, if you hit connect at that point, it'll open up and ungray this tab that's titled Focuser 1, and you can input the nickname of the focuser, the type of focuser, and any of the other preferences you'd like to put in. Okay, I'm going to exit out of this since I've already set it up. So subsequently, you go back to that focuser tab and you would say connect. And when you do that, you see the red light comes on indicating that you have a connection. It shows the Quick Sync FTX 40 focuser and the step position that it's at currently, as well as the temperature. And this is great because this focuser will uh, allow automatic te temperature compensation. So let's test it out. We will put in a step of 1000 and we'll say move in and you see the numbers changing. And at the same time, you can see the focus wheel turning and the focus are moving in. Try out, and it reverses direction and moves out. So one thing I'd like to point out that is really different from my old ZWO focuser is the sync command. In order, this is a 16-bit encoder. So it literally has 65,536 steps available since that's due to the 16th power. To focus evenly up and down, you'd like to set the focus point around 32,767. So that's half the distance. You'd have even focusing distance on both sides, both in and out of the focus. On my old ZWO, I literally had to remove the focuser with an Allen wrench hand move the telescope into a crude focus, reattach it, and then resynchronize the unit. You couldn't do that. There was no way to manually focus. On this unit, what you can do is disengage the clutch here. Now that it's disengaged, you see the find focus knob moves, manual focus knob, and you can move it to whatever you consider to be in focus for whatever image you're looking at. Once you're in focus, you can rotate this clockwise, re-engage the clutch, and just hit sync. And it will automatically now set that position as 32767, and you're off to the races. This is a really, really great feature, and I like it. So let's close this out. In reality, I'm never going to be using this. I operate off of APT. So let's go and open up APT next. So APT is now open. The first time you go into it, if you go to the gear tab and go down to connect the focuser, only the first time you'll see the ASCOM focus chooser open up. And if you go to the menu, you can choose the name that you assigned to your focuser in the setup step. So there's the focus link, third links number one. I assign that. I go to Properties, and voila, it opens up the Focus Links driver that we had looked at before in the Commander software. So we close out, and we say OK, and that's the last time you'll have to do that. Now, every time you go in here and say Connect Focuser, it'll automatically connect up with the Focus Links. So we'll try to test this as well. So our step size is 500, and we will hit the Focus Control. And you can see that the focuser is moving inward. And now it's moving outward. So now we've got focus control directly in APT. So the focus is now set up. 
Next thing I'm going to do is do a couple of quick calculations to determine the critical focus zone so we can set up the autofocuser within APT. So I've set up my hardware and software and ensured that my laptop is communicating properly with my focusing motor. So there's a couple of things I need to do next uh, to set up APT to properly handle the focusing operations. The first is determining the step size that we're going to be using in focusing. So every time I click on the focus up or focus down button in APT, it sends a command to move the focus motor X number of steps. If we set that number too small, the focus motor will move barely and we will not see any discernible change in the image, no matter how many times I click the focus command button in APT. If we set the number too large, then it's going to move right through the fine focus point and it'll be very, very hard to actually bring the image into focus. We'll just keep over correcting above and below the proper focus position. So to set this position, we need to first determine the critical focus zone of the telescope. So the critical focus zone, the, the official definition is it's the focal plane in which a focused image of the star is smaller than the first dark diffraction ring of the airy disk. So to boil this down to something a little bit more simple, stars are point sources of light in the sky. They are so far away. Only the sun actually shows a discernible visible disk. But because of the fraction of the atmosphere and our optics, stars show up as a disk in our images. If I take a look at this picture I've made, kind of crude picture, of a white sensor in the critical focus zone, movement of our sensor within that zone is the distance in which we won't see any discernible change in the image. So there is a narrow window in which we can either move the focuser or this focuser could shift because of thermal changes. And yet we won't really be able to see a visual change in our star shapes. So to figure out what that zone is, we use this equation, which is the critical focus zone is equal to 4.88 times the focal ratio of the telescope, which in my case is five, F5, times the wavelength of light. So every color of light has a slightly different critical focus zone. So let me step through what I did for just my luminance filter first. The center of the visible spectrum is a green light, which is about 550 nanometers. So I used that to be my lambda and converted it to 0.55 microns so that we're multiplying everything in the same units. So the CFZ is 4.88 times 5 squared times 0.55, which is equal to 67 microns. So that's the size of the critical focus zone. My focuser, which is an Optech Third Links FTX, has a focuser step of 1.07 microns per each step of the motor. And I get that from the manufacturer's data sheet. So if we take the 68 microns of critical focus zone, divided by 1.07 microns per step, the critical focus zone should be about 63 steps wide for my luminance filter. So we'd like to be a little bit bigger than this. The optimal step size should be 1.5 to two times the width of the critical focus zone. So I can choose a step size somewhere between 96 and 128 steps. So I repeated this calculation for all my other colored filters and generated this table with both the critical focus zone width and then the minimum number of steps and the maximum number of steps that we would choose to put into APT. So it looks like for narrow or for my wideband filters, L, R, G, and B, something around 110 steps would be in this range. Whereas I would reduce that to 60 steps for my narrow band filters. So next I'd like to actually bring the telescope into focus and figure out where the focus positions are for the different filters. And to do that, I'm going to be using a Botanov mask. So this is a plastic mask. In my case, you can also make it out of cardboard, uh, but it's placed over the aperture of the telescope and generates a diffraction pattern shown here, which looks a lot like uh, both vertical and diagonal X's. 
And when a star is perfectly in focus, this large central spike will perfectly bisect the diagonal X. And in this case, I'm using the star Alhina in the constellation Gemini. It's the third brightest star in Gemini uh, to do this work. So you can see it's, it's maybe very difficult to figure out exactly, especially when there's a little bit of atmospheric turbulence, when we're in perfect uh, bisection of this X pattern. But there is a tool called Botanov Aid within APT. And it automatically, if you place it over the star, it automatically figures out the diagonal X position and calculates the distance that we are from having the central spike perfectly bisect the image. So next, let's, I'll actually walk you through how I use this within APT. So now we're in APT, and I'll show you my imaging plan first. I pointed the telescope at the star Alhina, which is the third brightest star in Gemini, and then executed a plan in which I took five second exposures for both the red, green, and blue filters, followed by a two-second exposure using the luminous filter. And for each of these, I did three replicates in order to average out any of the scene variation uh, that would come from the atmosphere. And after accumulating that, we go over to the Gears tab, I moved my focuser 110 steps in a single direction. I started with outward and then executed the same plan. Moved it 110 more steps, executed the same plan until I had a complete data set. And then I did the same thing, moving the focuser inwards. And I'll show you why in a second. So here's the image as we see it. And you can see this tiny little white dot in the center. Maybe you can't, but that is the star Alhina. So first thing we need to do is increase the size of that. So we go to camera and image preview. And I will move to the one to one scroll and you can see the image. We hold down shift and then we can drag it to center it. Uh, but we need to stretch this image. So now we can go to tools, histogram. And what I will do is auto stretch left. And there we see Alhina with its diffraction spikes from the Batnov mask. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. We go to local and course adjustment. And what I'm going to do is just bring the black level down a little bit to darken the image. And we're going to bring the white down a bit as well. Okay, so now we can close out of histogram. And now we open up the Batonov 8. So in the Batonov 8, I've put in the focal length of my telescope, which is 679 millimeters. My pixel size is 3.76 microns with an aperture of 130 millimeters. And we now click on cross and we can drag the Batnov A directly onto the center of the star. Now we say recalculate, just to jiggle this a little bit, and you can see that it is calculated that we're 7.82 away from being on focus. And you can see that the center spike by the green line graphically is to the left of the diagonal X, and we'd like to bring that into the center. So let me just show you a better image so this was a red filter. Now let me show you what happens after a couple of focuser movements. So now we're at blue, blue, luminance. Here's red. So you can see after a number of focuser movements, now we're much closer. We move from minus 7 to minus 1.92. And if we go down one more movement, oops. Here's another red. You can see now we're very close to being in focus and the center spike is right between the uh, diagonal here. So let me 
just move the Batnov mask over so you can see what the star image looks like. So I collected all of this data. So at the end of it, I have a list of the different colors. I have the focuser position and I have the distance away from prime focus. So after accumulating all of the image data, I went back and plotted the distance from focus versus the focuser position and steps. And here's the data for just my red filter. Zero, which is the central yellow line, is the position of focus. And interestingly, you can see that I'm getting two different values. In one case, I moved the focuser outward toward larger values. And in the second case, I reverse direction and moved the focuser back in. And you can see that depending on what direction I'm moving the focuser, the point of focus actually changes. This is known as backlash, and we can compensate for that in APT. Uh, what this is caused by is the gears not perfectly meshing. So if we reverse direction of the gears as we move the focuser downward, we are now loading up the gears against gravity. There's a little bit of a gap between the teeth, and it takes a little bit of movement until the gears can re-engage. And this is why we have this difference in uh, focus position. So if we blow up this central region, here we see it. We can see where it crosses the zero line. And what we can do is actually measure it. In this case, it's 49 steps. So I calculated the backlash distance for all my filters. This should be the same, roughly, but you can see that it varied between 41 and 46. So somewhere in this neighborhood is the actual backlash value. So what I'll do in APT, I will tell it, to use 50 steps for backlash compensation. And we'll go into the software and I'll show you where we can make that correction. So back in APT, let's apply the backlash settings. We go to APT settings. And in this menu, we go to the tab that says scope and focuser. And what we're going to do is down here, we see make final inwards move. So every time we focus, it's always going to end the focusing command by moving the focus inward. And we said we wanted to move it in by 50 steps in order to clear the backlash. And that is it. So we say save and OK. And the backlash compensation has now been entered into the computer. So finally, we can also automatically correct for the difference in focus position depending on color. So here I've plotted out the focus points moving only inward for my focuser for both blue, green, luminous is right under the green line, and red. You can see that they differ a little bit by color of the filter. So just as we did in the backlash calculation, we can look at the difference. In this case, it's between the luminance filter and the red filter. And you can see it's a 33 step difference. So in doing the same analysis of all the colored filters, I came up with this table showing the actual position of the focuser. And I'm going to be using L luminance filter as my reference. So at the beginning of an imaging session, I'll focus on L, set it to zero. And then I've inputted the values for red. We need to increase the focus position by 33 steps. Green, there's no change. And blue, we have to reduce it by 11 steps. So in APT, we can put in these corrections so that if we want to set up an imaging plan, the computer will automatically make the correction corrections as we change from filter to filter. It's time for our final entry. We're going to go to APT settings to filter wheel. And now for each of the filters, we can put in our offset values. So for filter one, which is luminance, it'll be zero. And we said green is going to be zero as well. For red, it is 33 steps. And for our blue, it is minus 11 steps. So we can say save. 
and the offsets are now entered into the computer.